Hi all, welcome back to more Fields of Fire. Still on the Normandy campaign. This is mission three, uh, St. George del Le Parc Defensive, uh, patrol mission one, if you like. Uh, I've titled it St. George del Le Parc Defensive, and then in brackets I've got second platoon. Um, yeah, second platoon, because that's what's that's what we're doing. And then, so if I do happen to do all three, then you can, you know, which if you're happy just watching one, and you don't want to watch the other two, then because it might be more of the same. However, I'm probably going to go through it. Uh, okay, so and sorry, this is my part two. Yeah, so part one was just set up. Uh, I will put a title on a uh, comment in the header. Um, mentioning that uh, I think it's probably you know, it was an hour and a half long I think wasn't it <laughs> so okay I know it's probably more long winded than it needs to be but that's how I do things and uh, yeah anybody that's watching this is probably used to that by now so um, yeah but it's, it's quite important to get the grasp of this it's a bit different so and I want to make sure I get it right so I had a couple of follow-up questions to Andrew. Um, yeah, I went and, I went and uh, replied to his comment about how this all gets... Uh, he's, he's, given me some exp he's given me some stuff about starting Mission 3, which was good as well. I mean, my question was more about in between Mission 3 and Mission 4, but I want to start this properly as well. So, and to be honest, my, my, my question might have been about this as well. Um, it may well be, I'm, I'm maybe, yeah, I'm maybe talking rubbish there. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's a, it's a bit confusing because, no, no, I did, I did, because I did ask about the mission instructions for Mission 3 and Mission 4, just to try and get a grasp of that. And I think some of the stuff, like I said, what he quoted, what he answered were, is probably some of the stuff that is written in the instructions. Um, so just a couple of things that I asked. One was, do the other, um, sorry, he replied with, right, I'm not go, I've not got it up here. He said that the other units get set up under the fortifications. So it seemed like it was a not, they may, it sounded like they must, you know, in a sort of way. But I thought maybe I just quoted that in a way that, like, you, you had the choice. Well, no, he says, yes, they do get set up under fortifications. The intention is the for the HQs not to be dashing about doing lots of things. I mean, they, they can't. I mean, 3rd Platoon and 1st Platoon can't move. You know, the XO that's attached, I've got attached to 1st Platoon. I don't know if I... Actually, maybe I didn't mention that. I've got XO attached to 1st Platoon and I've got the 1st Sergeant attached to 2nd Platoon. And... I mean, I wouldn't have originally thought about doing that, but it does say, unlike offensive and defensive missions, patrols are carried out by just a single platoon, though you may also attach weapon teams, forward observers, and company staff. So, not something I would have thought about doing, but that's what I've done. So, we've got the first sergeant with us. First platoon's going to have the XO with us. Uh, well, third platoon's on his own. <laughs> And then, obviously, the COHQ can't be involved and uh, just sits where he is, I'm, I assume. Anyway, um, yeah, and it was like, do the other units have to set up on their foxholes? He said yes, so... Well, this is a platoon that I'm, platoon that I'm starting with, but I'm going to put them under the foxholes too. So, this is under the foxholes. Um, I'm, I mean, I don't see the point in... Putting them under, there's two foxholes there. I don't see the point in splitting them up. Okay, there's a potential contact right in front of us here. That, well, to be honest, well, that's one we're going to trigger. Um, is it possible that this could become affected? Well, yeah, maybe it, it might. Uh, and then we've got all these steps under the foxholes, but uh, I'm going to take my chances with that. It's just the whole issue with the communication and. Either either you're under there, under the same one, or you're not. It just seems, yeah. Whether um, like I say, moving on. I think uh, whether Korea starts it or or if it's not until Vietnam, I would think probably Korea, but maybe not. 
maybe it's Vietnam. But I think the radios work better, and then you can you can communicate from undercover. So they're going under their foxholes, and um. So this is only other. This is only other squad, but. I get the impression that because of the way he said it, that we have to start under the foxholes as well. We're on row one. And what the COHQ I'm going to involve in that as well. So everything's under this foxholes. So it will mean that COHQ will not be able to activate third platoon or first platoon. But like Andrew said, that's not the intention of this mission. It's, it's all about second platoon going on a patrol. Okay, COHQ is going to see him off. He's going to say, look, you've got so many commands. In fact, he might spend a couple of turns doing that because 2nd Platoon HQ may well um, detach an assault team and, and send it up there. And then the next turn, COHQ will be able to activate it again. Then, well, maybe not. Maybe it might not be moving out then. He might be waiting another turn. Remember, it's still 10 turns and we've, we've only got to get to there and back. We don't need to touch any of the other cards, but, you know, enemies will pop up from time to time. So, um, and then this is where the combat outpost is. And there was, I had two, well, I had one question on that, and then I've added a follow-up um, to that, which uh, I won't have got back yet. Um, I will I'll, I'll report back when I do. Um, but the first part of the question was, do the uh, does the PC marker um get removed from this card? And I I was pretty sure it did, and it was only because the word in here, because this is the bit that it talks about where it says no PC markers are placed on the cop if one is in play. I mean, Andrew's maybe sort of looked at, looked looked at my reply here as well because I have replied by saying. It's just because it said setting up for next patrol. But um, I'm maybe being a bit niggly there, really, Andrew, and uh, apologies, yeah. Because I, th I thought when I read this initially that that was the case. But I guess it's just because it was saying setting up for the next patrol. Well, I, in some ways, I suppose this is us setting up for the next patrol, isn't it? But you know what I'm saying? It's not... It doesn't say the first patrol and it... Just makes you wonder a little bit, but it's probably just the way I think sometimes. So anyway, the answer that came back was, uh, yes, you do remove that. Uh, and he quotes uh, 2.6.3 to me, which I have replied with that niggly sort of comment. That <laughs> sounds like I'm being a bit bitchy, but <laughs> uh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm just, it, it's sometimes the way I'll read things and if I read them that way the other is it necessary that other people might read them that way I don't know and I guess I guess I started realizing that by maybe bringing up some of these things this is meant to be a draft version of the rules now I don't, I don't know how uh, close they are to like finalizing it and sort of like you've got to come to a point where you say right it's not a draft anymore it's final and this is what's going in the game box that might have came and gone as well because uh, it's possible but I mean Andrew did mention a couple of things that I brought up that um could be looked into and maybe be adjusted and whatever and yeah, you, know, you never know if I, if I mention some of these things he might sort of say well maybe that could be worded you know, maybe it could be worded slightly different, and it and it brings up um my next comment. Although this is from the previous part, um, in which I asked it. Well, actually, let's just let's just finish this bit because one more thing. Also, my follow up question was: I I assume that um the combat outpost has to be under the foxholes as well, and uh, I'm not going. I'm not even going to wait on his answer for that one. Um. I'm just going to put them under the foxholes as well. So basically, there's no there's no real communication between the, um, the COHQ and the platoons because they're all under foxholes. Uh, again, I'm not going to try and split this up because uh, I want first platoon HQ to be able to communicate with the mor mortar. And yeah, the mortar's got a radio of his cell, but if any of them are under foxholes, again, they're... And we've got a heavy machine gun here. And we've got the EXO that... Um, yeah, well, they actually can't 
command each other, can they? Well, the EXO could give a command to the Platoon HQ, but it can't activate them or anything like that. So, yeah. Um, okay, so I'm just going to put them under Fox Holes as well and be done with it. Um, I'm pretty sure he's going to come back and say, yeah, they should be under the Fox Holes too. You know, it's, it's how it should be before the mission starts. You know, they're all in their, their areas and they're all, yeah, hunkered down and... And they, and eventually second platoon's going to move out and go on its patrol. Um, <clears throat> yeah, the the other thing, the question I asked uh, about the previous mission was the pending fire mission. And my question was, as uh, actually I'll get the enemy activity hierarchy out again. Hang on. Yeah, it was. Am I recording? Yes. Um, it was. Um, when I was checking the activity, we were on the hasty column at that time. Not that it's really relevant, it's mainly the instructions. And uh, it was a squad that was attacking one of our units. We weren't attacking it, um, and it was not undercover. Well, when I say we weren't attacking it, this was the question, because we, we had called in fire on it, so there was a pending fire mission marker on it. So at the time I thought, no, nah, it doesn't really apply and then there was a wee bit of doubt in my mind but I moved on by it and I says no it's not under fire so and this is the words I'm talking about under fire is it under fire or not so I concluded that it wasn't under fire and it had a valid target on PDF so we rolled on this we got no action which fortunately would have been no action if I had looked at this one and decided that that pending fire mission said that it was actually under fire but it was not under cover. We would have still got a one and it still be no action. However, Andrews came back and I had to look at his answer at first and I was about to, I was about to reply about, um, can you give me a bit, I, I was a bit, I wasn't sure what he was meaning because he, he just said no to my question. So my question was, um, as a unit that only has, I'm just trying to think of the words here, I'm not reading it. Is a unit that only has a pending fire mission marker considered to be um, under fire for the purposes of enemy activity? And his answer was no. So that's that, resolved. Um, but he followed that up with... Um, read, uh, read under fire, so in quotes, read under fire as... Uh, what was that? See, I should have it in front of me. <laughs> Uh, VOF. Uh, right, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to because it's kind of important. The word done in that was. No, I can't get it. Give me a sec. Uh, okay, we're recording. Yep. Uh, being affected by a VOF. That's the words I wanted to just throw in there before I forgot them again. So, what he says is read, read under fire as being affected by a VOF. So I was like, okay, pending fire mission, admittedly, uh, it's not came in yet, it's not incoming, it's a pending fire mission. Um, so fair enough, it makes sense. And that is kind of how I always thought of a pending fire mission, that it wasn't a VOF. But then I thought, I remember, there's definitely threads out there and definitely the, the conclusion that I came to when I played the game previously, and I'll tell you what, since I started playing the game again just recently, just these videos, uh, I was under the impression that a pending fire mission did count as a VOF. So I sent that back to him saying, okay, uh, that make that makes sense, but I was under the impression that a pending fire mission was a VOF, and he came back to me and saying, no, it's not. Um, and then, you know, he gives an explanation of the, the, what's happening, it's being fired, being called in, it's not there yet. I get that, I always thought that, but I was pretty sure that it was um, uh, out there in the threads that uh, a pending fire mission counted as a, as a, a VOF. Um, he however did finish um, his reply with, I'm pretty sure it was edited or clarified to say that um, pending fire mission does not count as a VOF because I thought and it's not really for all this um, but obviously that has an effect on the activity level and uh, if I was playing the game right now without 
not having come across that answer in question, I would have been counting a pen to find mission marker as a VOF towards activity. So it seems I've had that wrong. And uh, now admittedly I've not I've not kept up to date with all the errata and edits and clarifications that all these guys have been doing. Cause I think I, I think I said to you my last comment was maybe in twenty nineteen. It might have been later, to be honest. It might have been. Um, does that seem that seems like that's four years ago, isn't it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's not been four years since I played this game. But yeah, well maybe I need to look up back on my comments and my last comment regarding Fields of Fire and see when it was. But I know it sounded like when I read my comment there, I thought you're starting to get <laughs> you're starting to get a bit annoyed there, Grant. You're starting to get a bit frustrated, and it looks like you're almost out the door. And don't get me wrong, it wasn't because I didn't like the game, it was just because um, there was no... The the help had went away as well, like I, I, I mentioned uh, uh, Ricky Gray, it was, he, he answered all the questions and Andrew, I hope you don't go away because <laughs> because uh, you're going to be needed there, uh, for sure. Um, this game needs somebody to... And okay, you're going to reply to all the daft questions that people can't find in the rules or are too lazy to look for in the rules. It's a difficult one, though, because you go and search BGG, and I've said this again, you know, even for the daft questions, you're maybe not going to get the right answer out of them, and you eventually sort of say, oh, I'm just going to ask a question. You know, and I've maybe done it already myself, uh, and it's a shame because that puts more pressure on your the likes of yourselves and whatever to try and keep the game rolling. But I know you're a big fan of the game and you want the game to progress to where it should be. And yes, anyway, okay, right. Well, pending far. There we go. Um, good to know. Uh, I'll move on with that in my mind then. That doesn't count as a VOF. So I just hope. I hope I've not blundered because I, I actually I think even the end of the last mission did not have two I had two pending fire missions that I was counting as VOFs. So hopefully I didn't um err there. It's possible because um I think we still had one PC marker, I think oh, it's up the top left corner. And yeah, that's where the back of my mind I'm thinking we drew five cards for it, it was an A. So we were considering ourselves being at engaged, weren't we? Rather than contact. Is that right? So that might have been a blunder then. Yeah. Because I think at that time, I was probably counting the pending fire mission markers. Well, I'm afraid that one's gone now. Uh, I can only just take it forward from now. and Yeah. Whatever. Right, um, that's it. Can we get on with the game then, Grant? I've been wanting to get some more gameplay. I'm actually to like go. Uh, although I need to be careful. I need to just it's different. It feels all different. We're still going to activate everything. We're still going to go through the same procedure. I understand. There's not. There's not anything that changes though. The only one real change from now. Well, no, that's not true. These can't move. These can't move and he can't move the COHQ even though he's in, the, in with that this is the only this whole platoon can move we've got nine units here um, and he's wanting to move to here first then he's going to move to here and then he's going to move to his objective then he's going to move back to here and when I say he well let me finish and then he's going to move back to here and I want to say that they've got to get back to the first row then. I'm not really seeing that. Eh. Well, hang on. Combat patrol objectives, and this is what I was also just about to button and talk about. There's no need to clear or secure the objective or route points unless specifically required by the mission instructions. Well, it's not specifically required. Well, certainly the instructions I'm looking at, but I would like to have thought Andrew would have let me know if there was some kind of special requirement. Therefore, it is not necessary for every unit from the patrol to stay on the path of the route points. Only one unit needs to touch each point as they go. 
though more than one may do so. Now, do they need to get back? Yeah, I'm not... We know we need to go and touch that. And our waypoint, our route points back are there and there. But do we need to get back? I mean, 10 turns have to go by no matter what. Even if we're sitting doing nothing, we could... I think that's what ends up happening. I wanted to say that's what maybe could end up happening. That's that we just go through the procedure, of, like going through the turns, because there's nothing more to do. Um... Yeah, I mean, because, I mean, well, if I look at the what I've got as emission goals, you must move the platoon selected to the primary objective in row four. Oh, right, okay, and it does say, and return it to row one. There you go. You must choose the route, marking it with the route points. You do not have to clear the route or objective. Just move to it and return. The selected platoon is the only unit that you may move beyond row one. Which is sort of strange there when you've got this platoon on row two, but that was mentioned that you can have um, a combat outpost. As we see, it, it talks about a combat outpost there in the, in the initial placements, but it doesn't actually tell you, you can put what you can put in it. Although I need to look at the rules for combat patrols in the old rule book but I don't want to go there I think we're fine well Andrew said that one platoon can be put into that so that's what we've done Um, okay so we do actually need to return back to here to complete the mission but again looking back at the <laughs> I say looking back I'm not showing you uh, Points that we, we're going to get are to secure the primary objective, occupy the primary objective, secure a root point card, occupy a root point card. So we kind of want to, like... Hmm. Here's a question. Occupy and secure a root point card. Mind you, it says one per card. So my guess is that because this is root point one and root point four... I would still think you're only going to get one point for occupying it, one point for securing it. The fact that it's two different route points. What I would say is that's maybe you, where you could gain more points by coming back a different route. But by doing that, you're going through more potential contacts. So you make it a bit harder for yourself. What I thought was, I'll do it with this one, second platoon first. And the, the main reason I chose second platoon is to make sure we're going to come, well... We're going to do it with him because second platoon HQ is green. So that might, <laughs> might not be the best sort of idea. But anyway, he's green, remember, because he got he got um, eliminated in the last uh, mission and we weren't able to bring him back in time. It was right there. And there was a daft kind of move by me, which, um, well, ended in the results that we got. So there you go. Um, so, yeah, I, th I thought I'd put him through through it first and that's mainly why I chose to not come back a different route but what I'm, maybe if we move on next to either first or third platoon we might do that remember we've got to pick a different uh, objective we can't pick that objective so we've got to pick one of the other four and we might go up a route and maybe come back a different route just to like try and yeah spice it up a bit basically right can we go Grant can we go Okay, um, yes, well, sequence of play, it's not any different here, I want to say. Um, yeah, because we are offensive missions or combat patrol. Yeah, there's nothing changes um, here. The only other one to remember is that for our general initiative, um... It says if it's a single platoon mission, half the number first, rounding down. So if I draw a two from a, you know, an un, it's an unmodified initiative command, uh, half the number first, rounding down. I always hate this one. So let's say we've got a three. 
you half it first, it's one and a half. You round it down, half the number first, rounding down. Yeah, I think that takes it down to a one, doesn't it? It's just sometimes I always wonder, you half the number and then you round it, the actual, what you've half down. It can always throw me a little bit. I think that's, the way that's saying that, half the number first, round it down. So if we've got a three, we half it to one and a half and we round it down to one. So we only get one command. Um, which means if we get a one, we half it and round it down to zero. Yeah, okay. So we need at least a two to get in and out of that. Okay. Right, so friendly high rates Q event, uh, we start on turn two, so not happening. It's not a defensive mission, so we move on. Friendly command phase. Um, I'm just glancing a little bit over it, just in case it mentions something about combat patrol, but not. BNHQ is not on the map, so um, we activate the COHQ. Ah, ah, I didn't read it, I didn't read it. Ah. The, the limited divisibility illumination. Is it just in that section? Nine. Uh, I'm going to have to read this. Give me a minute. Right, okay, so read through this um, up to this part. Night observation devices. Don't think we've got any of this. Passive infrared, active infrared, thermal sites. Um, yeah, I don't, th I don't think we've got any of that. This is on page 69, 9 visibility. So just, yeah, reading through this a little bit just to get the gist of it. Visibility is a combination of the light level and the weather conditions. The two modifiers are added together to get the overall visibility modifier for the map. Well, we were only, we were only told that it was going to be between a plus 2 and a plus 5. Um, which is is the uh, light level this isn't this is to do with the moon and whatever it's at night obviously um but there was no mention of weather conditions so this is the random one that i drew plus four um just thinking here while i'm here um i want to say that we re-randomize this for the next combat patrol because it's going to be a week later but 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 i don't know that for sure um, so maybe it does stay with that. However, that's where we're at, plus four. So reading on. When the overall visibility modifier is plus two or greater, the effects of limited visibility apply. So that's what we're at, limited visibility, because we're plus four. Each mission lists the visibility conditions, which may vary, vary per turn. Uh, doesn't No, there's nothing to say about that. Place visibility markers near the map to keep track of the current visibility modifier um, well yeah I've got that plus four there but it's not going to that's not going to change from turn to turn as far as I'm aware um, my, I suppose my question is will it change from patrol to, to patrol which I'm going to maybe have to look more into um, the overall visibility modifier is applied to the NCM when calculating combat effects and can be partially or completely mitigated through use of illumination or night observation devices. Well, I haven't read about night observation devices because I don't believe we've got any of them. However, illumination we do have. Um, there was mention of it here. The German illumination comes from mortars and in the package packages we've got illumination here plus i'd like to look at that that's number 16 um just on that play card what's it where's the package where's package 16 there just to see what it says yeah illumination plus light machine gun nest uh mortar illumination and light machine gun team so yeah so that must yeah, and that's where it says it's from their mortars that they're going to illuminate. Um, so obviously we get a package like that, there's a chance that they're going to light things up and be able to uh, see things. And we'll, well, we'll get to We'll get to that. We'll get to that. In a second. Um, yeah, okay. So illumination. Know that grenade attacks off math off-map fire support, mines, claymores and booby traps are not affected by the visibility modifier. 
And the modifier is this plus four, like we've said, that's what we're going to get. So that, if we've got a combat on a card, that is going to add to the actual NCM, unless we eliminate the card. Or not just the card, it can also be an adjacent card that would have some effect, which we'll, we'll see as we read on. There's not enough lot to go through, but I'm saying that, that's me 30 minutes. <laughs> I haven't moved anything, so. I figured this might take a bit longer to get it kicked off, so what can you do? So 9.1, limited visibility effects. Limited visibility effects, commands and line of sight. So commands, the maximum number of commands that can be spent by an HQ or staff unit during limited visibility is four. So remember it was six before, now it's reduced to four. That's the maximum we can spend throughout this. Uh, well, I say throughout this. Yeah, while we're under limited visibility, it's going to be that. So there is a way of changing it with elimination though, I think. The maximum number of commands that an HQ can save during a limited visibility turn is two for green, but Unfortunately, right, sorry, I got called away there. Um, what was the commands maybe here? That's another commands that HQ can save during a limited visibility turn. Two for green, four for wine, six for veteran. Remember, our HQ for the first patrol is going to be green, so any commands over this number remain after an HQ has taken its actions, even if carried over from a regular visibility turn or lost just as in a daylight mission. Uh, now, line of sight, during limited visibility. <laughs> yeah, after me placing stuff on a hill here, <laughs> and now realizing we're not gonna, well, the, the illumination could help. During limited visibility, the maximum line of sight range without illumination or a night observation device is reduced to close range, so adjacent card. Um, so part of my plan there is out the window. So let's just get this finished quickly. Illumination. This is a bit that slightly confused me. Uh, we'll see if I read it this time. <laughs> Maybe change it. The mission books, right, well, we've not got them, indicate the illumination available during the campaign. Well, it does, yeah. It does tell us that. Um, actually, I don't know if I pointed that out to you, did I? Maybe I didn't sort of say that. There's our... Um, fire support and maybe I didn't you can see that artillery our 15th field artillery battalion has illumination it doesn't give a mine it doesn't do any damage um, it's the same it can be a three card draw and we've got six fire missions for that and obviously we can target a car and uh, reading on with us I think we're about to read that this happens immediately there's not a pending fire mission or anything like that. It just happens immediately and lights the card up. Um, you can see that the mortar platoon has some as well. Only four missions of that. Uh, however, the regimental cannon company does not have any of that. And like I've already said, that the Germans do have some of that built into their, their packages, uh, some illumination. So they can get up to that nonsense too. Okay, um, so the mission books do indicate the illumination available during the campaign. Where illumination is noted as being available for all night missions, uh, well, it's, it's not really specified to that. It says it can be used in any mission with at least one turn at plus two visibility. Okay, um, don't think that's relevant then. This plus two visibility was bugging me a little bit. Because um, it does say that the visibility modifier is plus two or greater. So I thought at first when I read this for some reason, although it doesn't really read like that now to me, that I was only be able to illuminate down to get plus two visibility. I'm talking rubbish there now. Yeah, I think we're just going to skip by that bit and I don't think that's relevant. So we'll carry on. Illumination can be delivered from several sources. Use it to mitigate the effects of limited visibility caused by light levels. Illumination does not help mitigate any weather conditions or smoke. Place an illumination marker on a card either by deploying a pirate. Oh yeah, I wanted to look in case pyrotechnics can do this because um, um, 
that might be useful and I might have to <laughs> bring some changes to that. Or by calling an illuminated fire mission. Um, we've got a rule there to look at, which you do well to look at, I think, Grant. Illumination is placed immediately and no pending markers needed. Just mentioned that. Um, and this is this is the only marker that I came across. I've only got one of them. And it's got artillery illumination on one side. And it's minus three, minus one, you can see, which we'll get to in a minute. And mortar illumination on our side, it's minus two, minus one. Um, so the illumination marker has one or more modifiers mit mitigating the visibility modifier. Apply the top modifiers to the card containing the illumination marker. Apply the bottom modifier of present to all adjacent cards. The illumination modifier plus the visibility modifier can never be better than daylight. Multiple sources of illumination are not cumulative. Use only the single most powerful illumination lowest modifier of those affecting a card. Remove illumination markers during the cleanup phase. Well, it says markers, but I've only found one. So I can't see there being many getting chucked about, but I thought there might have been more than one. So I'll have another look, maybe, if we need it. Um, and then just to finish off, illuminated units during limited visibility. Any card that is under the effect of illumination is considered illuminated. So, okay, that that's kind of relevant there because we've got a plus four moon condition, right? Let's just say I fired my mortar illumination. Now, that, that gives a minus two. So that... Right, I'll bring this across. So we've got a plus four moon condition... And we've got a minus two mortar sent up. So the minus two is the actual card that we fired it on. The minus one is the card surrounding it, uh, adjacent to it. So that would knock that down to plus two. But as I've already commented, that visibility modifier, well, when it's plus two or greater, the effects of limit, limited visibility apply. So without reading this part, I would have maybe thought that that wasn't enough to bring it down to give us an illuminated card. However, just reading this, it seems to clear that up. During limited visibility, which we're on with a plus four moon, right? Any card that is under the effect of illumination, so if we've got this, it doesn't matter that it's only taking it down to a plus two, is considered illuminated. The following rules apply. Illuminated cards can be seen at maximum range from other cards on the map, including other illuminated cards, without the line of sight restrictions of 9.1, which we just read about. And then the line of sight, uh, it says the line of sight of units on illuminated cards is not affected, and they can only see adjacent cards as per 9.1. So the actual card that's illuminated can only just see adjacent. So, yeah. And like I say, that minus two, taking that down to a plus two, the only effect that that has is basically the NCM is reduced to a plus two. Because at first I thought, that only takes it down to plus two, that means we're still we're still under limited visibility because it's plus two or greater, but that's that 9.2.1 is telling you that if it's under illumination, we can you can see it from maximum range. Okay, and it's just that I'll just adjust the modifier to plus two, whereas if we used artillery, because at first I thought, well, the artillery is the only one that's useful because it's going to take it down to a minus one. But let's just say you had the plus five condition, then minus three would still take it down to plus two, so that would make no sense. But that's not what it's doing. It's only affecting the net combat modifier. Well, it's not only affecting that, but that's what the numbers are meaning. If we fire that on the card, we have illuminated the card. That's what I mean. Right, just jump to the rule 7.16.2e. This is on page 58. Uh, so 7.16.2 is available fire mission types. And E down here is illumination. So I thought I'd just have a quick look at this. Parachute flares fired to provide illumination during night missions. Uh... It references back to 9.2, which we just came from. These can be dropped on any face-up card on the map with a successful call for fire. When the sight from forward observer to target card is not required. Okay, that's something I never thought about, actually. 
Ähm okay. Uh, I hadn't thought about that. I know they've been coming back to thinking, well, I can't. I've only got adjacent card line of sight, so how can I call for fire? I suppose it would. Yeah, and that means you've got to be adjacent to be able to call for fire. That's weird. Hang on. Line of sight from the forward observer to the target card is not required. Okay, that's a bit bizarre, but yeah, I think I might want to look more into that. That's it. Kind of, it kind of makes some sense that you want to light up a card. That's I don't know. Is that going to have an effect, Grant? I, I'm just a little surprised that. So this is our um. Artillery forward observer here, which <laughs> actually so suggest well, it suggests to me that we can light up any one. Of the, well, sorry, we can call for fire at our tent to light up any one of the cars on the map. Yeah, that, that's what it seems to suggest. So, well, we'll just move on because. <laughs> Uh, an hour 10 minutes have passed and I've still not made a move yet so let's get 20 minutes or so of some play Grant and um, yeah see where we're at oh yeah and uh, just before I carry on I, d I don't know why I didn't think about this um, Andrew came back and uh, has pointed out to me that and I was also even just discussing it there that I hope I've not blundered with this and I've read this, and I know this as well. So, whether I do, uh, I just obviously, it's, yeah, it's way over the top of my head. I will, well, I'll talk about this first, and then give my thoughts on why it became a thought in my head and become a bit relevant, and got me actually looking for the thread that I'd read previously. Anyway, it was um, regarding the pendant fire mission. And me thinking about it affects the activity level. If it's considered a DOF, it will affect the activity level. Well, if it is considered a VOF, yes, it would affect the activity level. However, it's going to be um, called for fire within our friendly command phase, right? And it's going to be a pending fire mission. Okay, so... We let's just say that we've got two of them out there and we're counting them and we're saying we are at engaged. We are at engaged level. Well the only time the only time that you look at the activity level, I think, is in the potential contact evaluation segment. This is the only time that it matters, isn't it? Yeah, I believe it is, isn't it? So we've we've called for fire, we've succeeded, we've got two pending fire missions out there so then you then you move through this and we do our enemy activity checks, we do this, we do this, we do this we then go on to this right, now like I say it's only going to matter in this section here 3.7.2 3.7.1 is the fire mission update segment, so you remove existing incoming and airstrike VOF markers Right, let's say there's none of them. Then you flip the pending markers to their active sides. So, it's <laughs> it's kind of irrelevant. You're going to flip these pending markers that you maybe consider as VOFs or they're not VOFs. Does it really matter? Not really, but I suppose we should have a rule as to are they VOFs or are they not? And maybe that's what I've finished off with. But, like Andrew correctly points out that it does not matter because these are going to be flipped to become VOFs because they're going to be incoming markers and then you're going to move on to the potential contact segment and um, you're going to evaluate your current activity level before you kick that off. So, um, yeah, it's a bit of a uh, daft one. However, I did go look in and found, and Andrew said that, before that the designer doesn't like coated, they like to be coated, so maybe the reason he doesn't like to be coated because well okay, that's a bit a bit 
cruel that he's got some things wrong in the past. He's got, or some things have not been correctly clarified or just not worded right or, or something. Um, however, yeah, I came across a thread that, that's from him, him that said that it was considered a VOF. But Andrew, you know, like he says, it doesn't matter. It doesn't make any difference if it's not. Um, uh, yeah. So there's threads out there. And that's why, but that's why there's a bit of, but it doesn't matter if there's confusion or not. But then, is it not better having it clear that, you know, it's it's not a VOF until it becomes a, uh, until it comes an incoming marker, you know, make it clear. But anyway, uh okay so that was yeah that was that so thanks again andrew for your, all your help and sorting that one out as well um and that was a bit of a dull moment because i thought yeah of course he's right it's like it doesn't matter it's not relevant until the potential contact probably segment. right let, let's go because i'm probably running out of time now so cohq right he is here he is undercover the only person he's going to be able to communicate as second platoon HQ. Um we are he's uh right. I need to just double check the levels of things, experience levels. COHQ is veteran. How about that? He's veteran. Let's let's have a quick glance. I mean he's not going to be used. This is my updated So we've got COHQ's veteran, XO's veteran, company for sergeants green unfortunately. Um now, first platoon HQ is a line. Line, we've got two veteran squads. Uh, second platoon HQ, unfortunately, was green as well. He took, he, he never got back, last mission. And then we've got veteran, veteran line. And then we've got a veteran um, third platoon HQ with one line squad and two veterans. And, um, oh, I've not put them in. Um, give me a sec. Where's my pencil? Yeah, I didn't put them in. So we've got wine for the 50 cal. Oh, where are you going, Grant? I'm in the casualties column again as well. That's where I put them all the last, last time. So we've got wine there. And then we've got veteran, veteran. So we've upgraded our second weapons to veteran. You'll see that I've put these attached. That's who they're attached to. I've changed things up a little bit here. Um, not got the 50 cal with the first sergeant anymore <laughs> well in this mission it, it would have been different anyway but uh, yeah it was a fair point and it's kind of silly having that situation um, now the, all the bazookas were veteran before but one of them took a hat so we were, we were able to bring that back to line and then the other two are still veteran and then the mortar section, because it's three steps, we left that line because we didn't have enough points left. So that's us up to date with that. Um, yeah, so COHQ is veteran and the second platoon HQ is green. So that's the two sort of important parts right now. Right, so activate the COHQ. He's undercover. He gets a plus... Oh, this is going to be about plus three or something. It's going to be ridiculous, isn't it? Um, I'm going to use that player aid, that's better. Let's zoom out a bit. Oh, we're zoomed out. Right, okay. Uh, where are we? Where are we? Yeah, command draw modifiers. Right, so the HQ staff, is he pinned? No. Is he green? No. Is he veteran? Yes, he's getting a plus one. Is he undercover? Yes, he's getting a plus one. A plus two. Is he under any of these VOFs? No. So we're setting a plus two. Is the current activity no contact? Oh, yes, it is. We're getting a plus three to this, this draw. Um, is no contact, isn't it? Yeah. Nothing harmed. Andrew did confirm. Well, that wouldn't have mattered anyway. The, no potential contact. There's no VOF on the map. So with a plus three for this on the big number... We're going to get a huge seven commands. <laughs> yeah. Well, we can only spend, what is it, four, isn't it? Hmm. Uh, right, we don't want that. We don't need that. What am I doing over here? Yeah, just setting my commands up. I don't know. So COHQ was activated and has seven commands. Right, and then 
yeah, I mean, all limited visibility, it doesn't matter what experience level it is, you can only spend four per day. So I can only spend four of these seven. And we are we are veteran limited visibility is here. So we can actually save six of them because he's veteran. Okay, well, yeah, he's he's not going to do an awful lot. He's 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 definitely going to activate um second platoon HQ um second platoon though, so we'll do that for one, and then yeah, that's pretty much all we can. Well, not not really, not entirely. Um, he could order uh, a fire mission. I don't know if that benefits us or not, because he could give the artillery forward observer um, to eliminate something. But if it only lasts till the end of the turn, it's not really going to do us any good, is it? No, it's not. It's not. There's no point in that. Okay, so the COHQ, that's all he does. He can save... Well, actually, he can save six, can't he? Because he's veteran. So he saves his six commands. Used one, saved six. Um, right, the thing is... Yeah, there's no point me putting my blue cubes on. Because most of the time... In fact, I want to say that as soon as second platoon moves away... All these platoon, all these are going to be acting under um, their initiative. I mean, we. Oh no, no, stop, Grant, stop. We, we can activate the first sergeant as well. Sorry, he's part of second platoon HQ. So I will rewind a little bit. So COHQ activates second platoon HQ because he's under those same foxholes and activates the first sergeant as well. So we'll knock that down and we'll just say five and we'll have the first sergeant uh, activated as well. Uh, I mean, it's just going to give him some commands. Oh, he's green, isn't he? As well. I forgot. He's, he's usually the one that's better and it's the other way about now. Okay. Right, well, I mean, all we're, all we're going to do here is break off an assault team and send it up into this orchard grove. So, second platoon HQ, and he is green, so he gets a minus one. He's undercover, he gets a plus one, so that balances out to zero, but it's also no contact, so he gets a plus one as well. So he's going to get a plus one on the number. We're going to do him first. That's a two, so plus one is three. Not the best. Although he can only save two because he's green um, and he can only use four. Right, okay. I was, I was going to say at first, maybe I should activate the sergeant first, but then he's green as well, so that's not really a biggie. Um, well, hang on. Oh, no, the, the sergeant's going with you, though, Grant. Then again, he's only always going to... Once he moves away from the COHQ, he's always only going to get one command every turn, so... So I think what I'm going to do here is actually, I'm going to try and be clever-ish. And, um... So I'm going to... Right, hang on. Let's, I need to check my squads as well. I need to sure. For, so for second platoon, the third squad is aligned. The other two squads are veteran. Uh, so I would probably say that we want to break the line team down then. It probably doesn't really matter. So I'm going to use one command from second platoon to detach a team. Uh, that's him down to two left. And we're going to get ourselves an assault team. Uh, okay. And... Yeah, I think I'm going to stop there, and that's why I'm talking about trying to be clever. If I get the first sergeant to move it forward, I think that's a better way of doing it.
because I've got two commands and I can save two commands. Mind you, the first sergeant can only save two as well, Grant. Yeah, but he's guaranteed to get one command. Well, he's getting a plus one as well, so... I think he's going to get at least two. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to save the other two commands of uh, second platoon. So all we've done was break off the... Yeah, see, here's, here's my bit about the blue cubes, but... I don't think I need to go and mark them all. They're, they're always going to be... They're n the XO, the first platoon and the third platoon, are never going to be activated. Is that right? Yes. They're never going to be activated. They're always going to act under impulse. Uh, and, then, and once the first sergeant and the second platoon HQ move off that card, they're going to be in the same boat, so... Uh, right, so first sergeant, he's on the same card. We've activated him. Uh, he's green as well, remember? Yeah, I'm gonna have to keep that handy. Uh, he's green as well, but he's undercover. So minus one for green, plus one for undercover, plus one for no contact. So he gets a plus one and draws a four. So he gets five, but yeah, it's gonna be a bit wasted, isn't it? So he's gonna he's gonna spend one. Yeah, it was probably a bit I might have ended up with a lower number. At least I've saved the two commands for platoon uh, second platoon HQ. So we're gonna send we're gonna use one to move up to our first route point. Only the orchard grove here. Exposed. Um so he's got four commands left. And yeah, he's just going to probably burn two because, again, you know, you know, unless we unless we want to do send stuff up into here, but that's not what we're doing. We're wanting to stick to our root points and just go up and get that and come back and uh, not mess about too much. Okay, so unfortunately, because he can only save two commands, because he's green and it's limited visibility, he's going to lose the A2 and just go back like that. Right, and then... Yeah, here's the thing about the rest of them, do we? Right, I'll quickly go through it then. So, first platoon, initiative impulse. So, we activate him with initiative. Um, so, it's a small number. He's... Oh, let's see. Is, is he better? No, I don't think he is. He's lying. He's lying undercover with no contact. So that's a plus two. So he gets three. So that's five commands. Um, But he can only save two anyway, can't he? Can't do any. This is right, isn't it? I do have to go through them all. I don't can't move them but they can give orders to fire and do other things but this is what makes it a little quicker because there's nothing we can do I mean they, they might they're the ones in the combat outpost so they might be able to do some stuff if an enemy appears so so we just save two commands uh, no sorry he's lying my bad uh, he's lying isn't he yeah, and then third platoon's veteran. <sighs> yeah, we maybe maybe should have put third platoon up in the combat outpost, Grant. Yeah, I didn't think about that. Okay, so he had five, sorry, and he can save. Um, you can save four. Line limited visibility. You can save four. So we're we've nothing to do with the one that we're. No, so we're just going to get rid of that. So and then third platoon. As veteran, so that's a plus one. He's undercover, that's a plus one. No contact, that's a plus one. So he's getting a plus three. Oh, he only got... Well, that's a bit annoying, actually. <laughs> uh, probably not matter. So, plus three to his one is four. Um, and again, he's not going to do anything, so he's just going to save them. It's just the fact he's veteran, he could have saved... Uh, I'm not showing you that. He could have saved six. So he had four, he's just going to save all four. Because again, remember, they can't, they can't move. They can only give orders to... 
Yeah, I didn't look at the pair of tent. That's I forgot. Hang on. Yeah, well, I think we're well. I say we're okay. I think it doesn't matter. There's because I did look at these before. These are the patrol mission pyrotechnic single options, signal options. Um, cease fire. If adjacent to route number, move to it. If adjacent to prime objective, move to it. If adjacent to signal, move to it. Signal? Oh, actually, where are you putting the pyrotechnic down? I'm assuming. Yeah, so again, really the only one that does interest me is ceasefire. I'm just seeing down there illumination devices. You've got handheld illumination devices are used during night missions to mitigate the effects of darkness and combat as described in 9.2. Uh, artillery or airdropped. Yeah, we, we've got fire missions. We'd, I, don't, I, I don't think we have that. Um. Well, Grant, hang on, hang on. That would be in the pyrotechnics bit, wouldn't it? No, oh, just as well, I came across that bit then. <laughs> um, yeah, and the, the, I remember now reading that at the time. So we have eight per night mission um, handheld illuminations. Um, that's kind of huge. Okay, so I'm going to, like... Sort them out. Uh, I don't even know where they are. You think I would have came across that? Oh no, yeah, they are, they are. They're staring you right in the face, Grant. Right, give me a minute. Okay, so we get eight of these, and it's per mission, so my assumption on that is, um, you know, it's not per patrol, so, well, second platoon is what we're doing just now, so I'm going to give... Well, I'm going to give each of the platoons two. Um, yeah, I think so. And, uh, well, we're going to have two left over. So I'll give one to the XO and one to the... Um, I mean, the XO is not involved in this mission, but he will be in the, one of the other ones. One of the XO and one of the first sergeant, I think. Yeah? Yeah, let's go with that. So, yeah, what did it say about them? Did it give you any information about them? I just came away from that, but that was in pyrotechnics, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, here. Uh, so, handheld illumination devices are used during night missions to mitigate the effects of darkness and combat as described in 9.2. So, they give a minus one, may, not to adjacent cards, it looks like. Yeah, might need to look a little bit into that and see how it works. Looks like it can be. Yeah, it's a bit. Uh, yeah, looks like you can fire that. So, how far can you fire it? Um, well, as a handheld device, pyrotechnic, there are three purposes eliminating. I'm just wondering where you, where you, when you, when you use it, can you fire it to the adjacent car? I mean, we know that the Red Star, Red Star parachutes and cluster, they affect the whole map, don't they? Well, aerial devices may be placed on the same card as, or any card adjacent to the unit deploying them. Ah, Okay. So that's what that's going to be. It's still going to be an aerial device, isn't it? Yeah, artillery or airdropped aerial. So we can actually fire it on the card that we're on or a card adjacent, and then it's going to give a minus one to the, the moon situation, but it'll still light the card up. 
Ah, if we have to be adjacent anyway, it's not... Well, no, that's not true because we've got... We could maybe have um, our uh, 50 cal machine gun back here. You know, we could maybe be moved away up here and we've got something on here that's annoying us. We light that card up and then the 50 cal machine gun can see down to that then. So... In fact, once we were up in that car, yeah, he's going to be firing on the top. Oh, no, he's allowed to do that, though. Yeah, that works. So, yeah, okay, good. Um, Why did I get thinking about that? Where was I? Uh, yeah, it just came into my head about, like, pyrotechnics. I didn't look them up. Okay, so we've done first, second, third platoon... First sergeant, just the XO to do. And uh yeah, well he just he'll just get one command, won't he? That's it. He just gets one command. And saves it, sorry. Because there's nothing he can do with it. Okay, that's cool. Um and then general initiative, well we yeah. Oh no, we can, we can look for cover. Yeah. Oh, there's the other thing. You know, I could have split that off and gave that assault team... Well, that was 3-2 platoon. See, I've not attached it to the squad. I've just attached it to the platoon HQ. So it's going to cost a command to pass it across to somebody. That's why he's just better just using it himself, isn't he? Yeah. Um, yeah, we want our one here because we can search for cover. So, and remember, this is right... This is half rounded down so it's an unmodified although well although it's unmodified it's then going to get halved and rounded down so here we go oh it's a good one four half rounded down is two um that's overkill <laughs> we only need one um so he's going to attempt to seek cover on the card and uh, yeah got things a bit Please, I think I just did adjust some things a little bit. Uh, so there's two parts of cover, and it's a three-card draw. Um, he's an assault team, so he's aligned. So no modifiers to that three-card draw. So we're looking for the word cover. Nope. Yes. Okay, good. That's good. Good start. So he goes under uh, plus one cover. Uh, let me put that down underneath it. And, uh, yeah, we can't... Yeah, we can't do anything with that. Well, we didn't do anything with that. We didn't do anything with that. We can't do anything with our... General initiative. I don't think. Unless I'm missing something here, but I don't think so. Okay, so, all done. That's me at an hour. And I, know, I know I've not done an awful lot, but it is kind of late. Um... I'm saying that, Grant, you can surely run the turn out. Because there's one potential contact. Yeah, well, let's push on and finish the turn because there's not, there's not an awful lot more going to happen anyway. So, yeah, because there's no higher HQ event either. So we've done general initiative. There's no higher HQ event. There's no enemy activity to check because no enemy yet. Capture segment, retreat segment, AT combat vehicle, fire mission update, none of that. Potential combat, uh, potential contact, sorry. Yes, so we have one here. Now, uh, yeah, I need to just turn this over and then decide. Yeah, because it's not, we're not on, mul if we were on multiples, we would have to turn all, them all over. So we're going to turn this over and it's either going to be a B or a C. Kind of hoping it's a C, but it is. Okay. Right, so I see. Where did I put that? Where did. Oh, see that. So, where are we? Contact levels. Well, we're at no contact. Yeah, and there it's there. So, I see at no contact. It's a four card draw. Okay. Uh, four card draw. Yeah. No, no modifiers to that, no. Four card draw, looking for the word contact. Here we go. Oh, bang, take that. 
Right, so it's a successful contact. Okay. Uh, right, let's just hang about here and get the package tables over. Right, I'll move back there to check for that night stuff. Mission three, isn't it? Potential contact C. Okay. So drawing on a 10, we get a, an eight. And an eight on potential contact C is a patrol. So package 14 patrol. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll come back to that again. I always like to look at it first, just... I just... If I draw this now and then go and look, I kind of forget sometimes. So, package 14, patrol. Um, patrol. So, place PDF, VOF, no. So, that's good. And he is spotted. So, that's good. At max line of sight. So, it's a squad. Now, hang on. We're on mission three. So, it is still using the ATL squads. A squad plus an exposed marker. Um, sure, we had this one before, but I'm like, does this does he go under the cover? Well, surely that's a question that I could just easily find by typing in the word patrol and the BGG for a search. Because, I mean, he, he still could be undercover. It's not saying he's not. Whereas, if you look at that very bottom one, which we had, well, we looked at, it says no cover, not exposed, though. Um, okay, I'll go and have a quick look um, and we'll get a squad ready. Uh, it doesn't really matter which one because they're all always. Um, we'll get an exposed marker for them. But is he going under the default cover? Which I want to save as foxholes, but I might need to double check that. Right, I'll go and have a quick look. See, see if I can find for sure if it comes under cover or not. I guess because it doesn't say it, it's not, I suppose it's just because it's saying it's exposed, but right now we've got an assault team that's undercover and it's exposed, so what's the difference, Grant, you know? Uh, okay, that was a bit trickier than I thought, because Patrol brought up lots and lots of <laughs> five pages worth of threads. I was forgetting that's like the Patrol missions and whatever. Yeah, so I, I went for a Patrol package and I got a thread, and uh, fun enough, John Brown replied to this question and it was asking about if it comes in with cover. Now he's quoted, I haven't read it yet, this is old drill book, he says 9.2.3. So there you go, on the mission instruction lists the default cover level. Place enemy uh, in the package being placed on the same card under the indicated cover marker unless, and just look at B rather than, it indicates the unit is exposed, in which case do not use any cover, do not use any cover marker. So, interesting, is that in the new rules then? I'll be undercover then, Grant. Here we go, page 64, 8.4.6, cover for new enemy placement. I'm so glad I printed this rule book out, by the way. I would have uh, given up by now if I had to look at my tablet to, to, to find all these things. Let's just flick a few pages, it's got some idea where to go, and it's, it's great. Um, yeah, it was so worth it. <laughs> right, um... Thought I'd maybe just quickly get. Uh, there we go. A little bit up there. If the units are described as exposed or in no cover in the package description, do not place them under any cover marker. Okay, good. So it's it's still the same rule and it's clear there. Uh, yeah. Again, maybe the mission books, new mission books, might make that a bit clearer. Maybe. But it is, at least it's got it there in the rules, so that's good. Right, so we do now still have to find out where this is going. There's 2-2 two -two platoon, 2-2 two -two squad, exposed. Um, 
and what was it? Per package table placement said max line of sight anyway. Right, let's draw on a 10. It's an 8. So it's going to be left front at max line of sight. So, well, here we go. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the unit's got long range, so normally, and this is a cemetery of uh, white borders right round, so normally we'd be going away out of here, but because line of sight's adjacent, because the night time rules, um, that's not the case then, is it? Yeah, because he wouldn't be able to fire upon us. So he's going in the cemetery, isn't he? Yeah, I don't think you even need to look this up, Grant. Although I'm looking <laughs> for a real nine again. Line of sight, during limited visibility, the maximum line of sight range without illumination is reduced to close range. Yeah, so he, need, he needs to be able to open fire. Yeah, it's not, we're done, Grant. Uh, so he goes, now he, he was, he's not point of view, Place in a VOF or PDF, and he's not, um, and he's, um, I'll just put that up there, just hide it out of the way a little bit. He's, uh, he's spotted as well, and he's exposed. And we've only got an assault team here. Oh, wait a minute, we've got a force here though. <laughs> okay, it's all gonna kick off. That's good. Right, so he's there. He's spotted, he's exposed, he's not under cover, he doesn't start opening fire on us, he's going to start doing that in the clean-up phase. And he has to go on this card because he needs to be able to... Oh, no, 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 Grant. <gasps> yeah, although he doesn't open up fire, he still needs line of sight on this guy, so I can't place him further away. That's right. Whereas normally... He let's just say he had close range weapons, but there wasn't it wasn't night time. He could be placed back here, as long as he can line a sight on that. He doesn't need to be able to fire at it. That's what we that we got that from. Well, we've worked that one out. If it says no to place, if it says you don't need you don't place a PDF VOF, and you can go out to maximum range, maximum line of sight range. Doesn't it doesn't care about your weapon range, maximum line of sight range. But because it's night, he's got to go there. So, what's going to happen? Well, this is an assault team. It can see him. However, it can't. It's not got the range in its weapons. However, da -da -da -da, first platoon in the combat outpost says, let's get him. Um... Now the worry is it's going to fall, fire back at us. <laughs> um, but however, in the cleanup phase, so we're actually going to get to deal this some hurt, hopefully, first. So what are we firing with? Are we firing with a mortar? We've got a heavy machine gun, which is automatic weapons. We've got a mortar section, which is heavy weapons. Yeah, we are. Yeah, we're firing with heavy weapons. We're firing one of our mortars. Don't see why not. Um, and just to put something on it here, we've got our 50 cal machine gun here is up in the hill that we'd normally be able to see this and overhead fire onto this as well with, with more heavy weapons and create a crossfire. But remember, he can only see because it's night time on there. Now, if we were to illuminate this card, or if we had if we had illuminated that card, maybe took a chance and said, right, let's illuminate that with something, then this guy would then be able to fire and create that crossfire. However, I think what we've got is fine. Well, I'm saying it's fine, isn't it? You've got a plus four moon condition, so... Well, he's exposed though, and it's only plus one for the card, so that's not bad. It's not bad. We can't add any more. Add any more to it now. We're past that stage. Right. Okay. Well, that's uh, that was a potential. Actually, that goes away. 
and he wasn't he has blade because that's where we're firing on. So that's one down. Good. Um then moving back to the sequence of play. Pin uh hat not stop. We should change the contact level uh, the activity level. So now we are at contact. Not heavily engaged, but contact. Um Because there's one Occupy car with a VOF under, well, one occupied unit with a VOF under it. Sorry, the, the unit's under a VOF, yeah. Um, so, yeah, contact. Pinned recovery segment, none of that. Combat effects, right? Well, let's deal with it then. So, uh, so the NCM, yeah, let me just. Let me see that about the. Doesn't give me a rule there, does it? 3.7.4 might tell me something. This is what you see the effects of the. Determine MCM 6.4 as. Yeah. Well, let's just have a glance at this. Yeah, I'm going to have to get this wrapped up, though. It's pretty late now. Um, so, calculate net modifier. Well, we've got heavy weapons from the mortar. Uh, yeah, I've got to remember that incoming mines, they don't, they don't take into account the modifier. I'm going to say the mortar does... Well, I'll just glance back to that in a second. Anyway, we've got any other modifiers that get added, like crossfires, concentrate fire, none of that. The net modifier due to visibility, illumination, well, we've got visibility issues, we've no illumination, we've not done that, and observation devices, and then we've got the actual cover and terrain cover and whatever. Um, so just let me glance at... Uh, there it's... Whoops, 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 whoops. Right, straighten things up. Calm down, Grant. Try to rush it now. Uh, note that grenade attacks off-map fire support. Mines, claymores and booby traps are not affected by the visibility modifier. So interesting grenade attacks, Grant. Keep that in mind. Because a, a plus four is kind of tough to get through. So we want to ignore that if we can. So grenade attacks and off-map incoming is going to be our way in here to like maybe do a bit more than than we can do but the fact that we've caught this guy not undercover exposed we've spotted him before he spotted us um that might give us a shot so well we've got plus one and then let's just chuck the moon in there so plus four for the moon so he's got a plus five and then he's got a minus five Minus two for explorers, minus three for the heavy weapons. So yeah, so it's, it's on a zero. Now remember, he's vet, he, they're veteran units as well, so if we do that to get a hat, we've got to remember that. But, well, we're on a zero, Grant, so we need a bit of luck. So here we go. Oh, it's a hat. It's a bad card. So we've got a hat. So we're looking, the, unit, the units are all veteran. Remember, he's three steps as well. So, veteran as PC. Wow, what a result. Paralyzed casualty. So, this is a great start. So, his first step is a paralyzed unit. And his second step is a casualty. And, yeah, I was going to look into the... I'm just going to give him an A uh, fire team, right? Again. I'm going to have to sort that out a bit more. Uh, I noticed it was Andrew that made some comment or answered somebody's question about it, but um, how they how they all get broken down and whatever. Uh, it, it looks a bit more complicated than it probably needs to be, and it probably isn't as complicated as it's shown. So we get a paralyzed result first. And then a casualty for the second step was, and then because that's only got one step left, we got a fire team. 
So he goes away. Ah. Uh, hang on, were we not tracking ammo for then this turn as well? No, that's going to matter to him. But yeah, squads and LMGs were tracking six points of ammo. So he never got to use any of that. However, he's broken down a fire team which won't now, now track the ammo, so that's fine. Um, so this is not undercover. I'm just going to put that down the bottom. Uh, paralyzed fire team. Both panned now. And still exposed at the moment. And that was a great start. Okay. And then no no return fire by him. Because, yeah, he's not quite there yet. Well, he's about to do something, though. Yeah, that, that's true. That He's still going to... Uh, is, that, is it close range? Doesn't matter. I mean, yeah. Yeah, he's got close range. Okay. Well, he's pinned as well, so that's that's a benefit. Right, update ammo levels. Well, we do have something to update because that was our mortar that fired. Um, anything else that we track? Yes. We've got... What's under that? That's a bazooka. We've got one of the heavy machine guns as well. Oops, sorry. Not showing you that. So we've got the one heavy machine gun ammo and one mortar ammo. So one heavy machine gun. They start with six. So he's down to five. Uh, oh, yeah, that's first platoon. Yeah, that's right. And then the mortar um, spends one of his four as well. Yes. Okay. Uh, and then his ammo, well, is his unit got sort of dispersed and whatever is. And uh, I like to say, uh, the, the fire team doesn't, doesn't track it, so. The squad's basically disintegrated anyway. Um, and then clean up, clean up. Remove pyrotechnic smoke, illumination. See, that's where we would remove that. Exposed. So that comes off and this comes off. Um, move fire, concentrate fire, grey, grey mass, right, evacuate casualties, no, enemies firing at cards without valid target shift, cease fire. Um, yeah, so this is when he opens up, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, he opens up on the most steps, so he's firing on this card, yeah. So he's now attacking. He's got an all pin status, though, so that's the good bit about it for us. But yeah, you know, it can still, it could still hurt. So he's firing back at us with all pinned. Um, yeah, and we can't. Well, well, what we can do is platoon move up into here and possibly artillery fire into there to try and shut that off. We've realised that's a pretty decent way of dealing with things that are stopping the fire on something that we don't want getting fired on. Yeah, or illuminate the card and allow this mortar fire to do them. That's another option. Right, adjust VOF, PDF and activity levels. Um, well, actually, we've moved up to engage now because we've got two cards that are occupied with... Um, VOFs under them, uh, units with VOFs under them, and um, sorry, units under VOFs. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to say it that way because the situation at the last mission where I had issues with <laughs> uh, thinking that there was a VOF and it was just one one of my guys firing on their own card and nothing. Uh, right, that's it. Um, so we did get through the turn, so we're on to turn two, but that did still end up being an hour and a half video, Grant. So we got it started at least, and we can now, uh, when I come back tomorrow, I'll get, mo I'll get moving a bit better, and hopefully we'll not have too much more to go through, but it is different, and it's, I think you've got to be careful and make sure you're getting it right.
right, I'll not waste any more time. I will get away from now and I'll be back tomorrow sometime. Okay, cheers. <laughs>